Hello friends, finally we have reached to the last lecture of this course on novel technologies for food processing and self life extension. In this lecture, in the next uh, 30 minutes or so, I will give you an overview of food processing situation in the country. Also, I will spend few minutes on summarizing whole course content what we studied in the last 60 lectures and I will take this opportunity to give you an overview of R and D activities in my laboratory. You know friends in India there are significant opportunities nowadays it is being considered a global sourcing hub. India has 52 percent of the cultivable land compared to 11 percent world average. All 15 major climates in the world exist in India. It has 46 out of 60 soil types. There are 20 agri climatic regions, sunshine hours and day lengths are ideally suited for round the year cultivation. And this situation has been exploited by our scientists farmers very well. We now have largest live stock population in the country. India is the largest producer of milk it is largest producer of cereals, second largest producer of fruits and vegetables. It is among the top five producers worldwide of rice, wheat, groundnut, tea, coffee, tobacco, spices, sugar, oil seeds and what not. The situation as far as agricultural production is now very good, but there is an alarming note note as well. Still 20 to 34 percent of our population is undernourished. So, there might be different reason for this. One important factor is the wastage of agricultural produces. Huge wastage across the supply chain leads to lower level of processing and hence low value addition. In our country, the high losses of the products are towards the initial part of the value chain. If you can see in this slide, just I have summarized the different uh, stages to which the food has to pass right from the harvest in the field till it reaches to the consumer on the table. So, it passes in the from the different stages like in the field, then in the processing factory, transport, storage, marketing and finally, in the home. And each and every stage is, there might be some losses. So, if a comparison is made among the developing countries and the developed countries, we see that in the developing countries like ours, there are relatively high losses in the produce in the initial parts of the value chain. Whereas, in the rich countries, whatever losses take place that is towards the end of the value chain may be that at the end of the consumers and so on. Regarding the level of processing across the segment, if we look at in our country, still the perishable items like fruits and vegetables, we process only to the tune of 2.5 to 3 percent as present, whereas the country like US, they process 65 percent of their produce, even Philippines processes 78 to 80 percent, China 23 to 25 percent of their fruits and vegetables are processed. Regarding 
marine products, poultry, buffalo meat, etcetera. The range of processing in our country is from 6 to 26 percent, whereas in developed countries they process about 60 to 70 percent of these products. If you look at the milk, 35 percent of the total milk production in the country is processed in both organized as well as in unorganized sectors, whereas in the developed countries about 60 to 75 percent of their products are processed. So, there are means at one stage we are producing more, we are very good as far as the agricultural and food production is concerned, but there are much more needed to be done as far as the post harvest management and processing and value addition is concerned. So, a paradigm shift is needed in our approach to providing nutrition and health security to people. Means that is from the crop production alone we cannot do the justice, we have to uh, focus on the reduction in post harvest losses as well as to increase the value of the food produced food. The paradigm shift is needed from self sufficiency in food production to providing food items that are needed for meeting all the nutritional needs. From food security at the state level, we need to ensure nutrition security at the individual level. So, means that is for sustainable food and nutritional security, there are two important factors which food processors, food engineers or food technologists need to be concerned are the, the area two major areas which needs attention or focus of food engineers, food technologists are that the minimization of waste by applying good post harvest practices, post harvest management and we must ensure that the wastage in the agricultural produced is minimized if not completely eliminated and the second aspect is processing to ensure that the maximum of our produced is processed and value added and both of things reply to both of these is the innovation. We should have innovative approaches in the product development, in the process development as well as in the food packaging and storage. Regarding product development, obviously we must ensure that the product which is produced, it is microbiologically stable, enzymatically stable and it has a good nutritional value it has good sensory characteristics and of course, it has a good self life and it is economically viable product. But while doing all these things, one must keep into mind the consumer acceptability. The products which is developed, it must be acceptable to, to the consumer. Otherwise, whatever effort we made that if it is not liked, if the product is not liked by the consumer, so uh, our efforts will be wasted. So, at present there are lot of opportunities in food processing, particularly if you look at the business opportunities in food processing, both in the domestic sector as well as in the international markets, lot of opportunities exist. In the domestic market, the business opportunities in food processing include from upgradation from commodities to packaged and branded products. We need to develop there is a lot of market for convenience foods like ready to eat, ready to drink, ready to serve, ready to cook products which offer value for the money. There is a lot of market nowadays for the products which are focused towards children, young adults which offer changing lifestyles. There is a lot of scope for 
development and marketing of health foods and beverages if you look at the international market nowadays indian traditional foods are becoming popular in global market even the foreigner people they eat they like to eat now indian food products a number of our indian products are now globally competitive but only important consideration for our product to be uh, made saleable in international market is the quality we must ensure good quality of our products and good safety of our products as per the international regulations indian food processing industries is still now facing certain constraints like the lack of right quality raw materials are still not available and if the good quality raw material is not available to the industry industry cannot do miracle for a good quality products availability of good quality raw material is a must the raw materials which are available they are the prices in fact generally they are high prices and these high prices of the initial raw material obviously results into the high product prices the industry is dependent on wholesale market which is controlled by middlemen another important constant facing the food processing industry is the lack of year round availability of raw material lack of cost effective packaging technology even the outdated technologies and untrained manpower these are some of the important concern even most of the food processing industries in the country still are uh, run by the old dated technology or even the machinery being operated by unskilled manpower untrained manpower there are so many a times infrastructural constraints that is the maybe the industry is not up to date the machinery uh, functioning and other things and even good conditions etc and the market is highly price sensitive so these are the some of the major constraints which are uh, there which food industry faces from time to time and obviously in order to make sure that is a success a uh, key factors for success in the food industry are taken from these constants like number 1 if one want to be a successful food entrepreneurs or if you want that your product should be a good quality it has a good market so you have to do certain things in order to ensure a success of the industry that assured supply of quality raw material at economical prices is one important aspect and this should be done either by developing linkages with the cultivators by following appropriate or taking appropriate measures to reduce the wastages of the raw materials by taking appropriate measures to increase the shelf life of the farm producers and therefore making the more farm produce available for the processing even some of the primary processing like grading storage of farm produce etc should be encouraged so that the availability of the raw material to the industry is uh, made more it is increased also systematic promotion and market development is another very very important factors we should keep that is up ourself our our product are always up to date that is we must see that what is the need of the hour what is the need of the day maybe that suitable surveys etc should always be taken and the products should always be from time to time should be updated for the industry that is it should have ability to bear the high cost of the entry innovative product development tapping the export market these are some of the other factors for success in the industry as far as the strategies 
to import improve export is concerned because if an industry is able to tap the export market there are large uh, much more chances for the success so uh, as far as the in order to improve the export one should take appropriate measures like like export promotion programs should be strengthened even marketing intelligent intelligence and research as regarding the export should be strengthened and should be undertaken even the standards development and testing facilities because as i indicated you there is one major concern regarding export of the indian product to foreign industry is to meet the regulatory requirement of those countries in which we want to export the product so we should meet to the standard requirement even if the need be that is we should work for developing those standards and we should have uh, the industry should have uh, the approachable here they, they should have proper testing facilities where these uh, their product they can get their product tested and make sure that their product meets to the required standards even then proper enforce mechanism that is one should ensure that standards which are developed or which are tested that is all these are regulatory requirement they should be properly enforced during each and every step in the value chain in the processing in the transportation etc quality assurance program like gmp ghp hsf etc should be strengthened even training and skill development programs should be undertaken with an view to make sure that the product which is produced is of good quality and of course innovative approaches should be undertaken in each and every aspect of the product manufacturing whether it is packaging or its marketing etc so if with these uh, things one can uh, have a better exported of the product and better market regarding supply chain management strategies of course this strategy can be used for all the agricultural producers but this is much more uh, applicable in better way for the fruits and vegetables in fact what has been done by dr vargis kurian in country in the field of dairy processing similar approach is needed for the fruits and vegetables because in our country that fruits and vegetables etc are produced in scattered way in small catchment yards so some arrangement should be made like in earlier classes we studied that refurbance or cama control atmosphere or modified atmosphere refurbance etc so using with appropriate uh, these vines the materials they can be collected from different uh, collection centers or collection yards and they can be taken to the primary processing center or primary processing units and as far as possible these primary processing units may be located near the production farms near the agricultural farms and Uh, in these primary production unit this produce can be exposed to different uh, some primary processing condition like sorting grading cleaning packaging etc and then a sub a part of the product which can be sent from here to the fresh food uh, supermarket and the remaining it can be sent to the secondary processing unit uh, for processing and value addition and these processed products and value added products may be then sent to the processed food supermarket because in the fruits and vegetables we find that not all the producers are processable so it becomes important that if the produce is directly sent to the factory that is the, there may be chances for that uh, this product is if it is not processable if it is not of good quality the it uh, may result into the loss so it is a better approach that these products are graded and one grade which can be directly sent to the fresh food market as a fresh produce it can be sent and the remaining can be sent for the 
secondary processing and value addition. So, finally, means that is end to end holistic approach is needed like from farm to fork that is right from the harvest till it reaches to the consumer. One has to as an industry or as a processor one has to make sure that at each and every step in the value chain like in the uh, for handling by or grading or sorting by having proper or appropriate post harvest management and primary processing steps or even temperature uh, control distribution. One should ensure that the product which is delivered to the processing line or to the factory is of good uh, value, it has a good quality may be computer vision system or RFID uh, distribution system during distribution RFID tax etcetera. There are many such approaches which can be used to make sure or to see that the quality of the produce is maintained during transportation, storage and primary processing etcetera. So, by this one should ensure that, that the processing plant a good quality material and then is uh, delivered and then in the processing and packaging plant by uh, following or by utilizing HACCP as well as following good manufacturing practices, good hygienic practices etcetera. One should prepare the good quality products and finally, again in the product distribution, product packaging, retail etcetera, the good conditions should be maintained and by this one can ensure that the product by the time it reaches to the consumer table, it maintains, it is maintained in good, it is good in quality and it is a safe product which is delivered to the consumer. So, that is important and in fact, there are for this thing, there are uh, different uh, approaches we have already discussed uh, in the earlier classes that all this is starting from the, uh, from the raw material till it reaches to the consumer tables. In the value chain there are different steps and accordingly in this course in the last uh, tw uh, 12 weeks we have taken various uh, uh, stages like uh, we in initially in the first week or so we devoted some time on the components of the food, food structure we studied what are the different reactions which undergoes that is major reactions like gelatinization, browning reaction, rancidity etcetera or protein denaturation and other related reactions which influence both quality and safety of the food during processing, handling and storage. Because these are the reactions at times when needed they should be uh, a care should be taken that uh, these uh, spoilage causing reactions should be minimized and other. So, we have uh, had a good exposure in these areas. Then we uh, follow, we studied that is the novel methods of food processing like high pressure processing, membrane technology, irradiation, dielectric heating, supercritical fluid extraction, freeze drying, extrusion technologies, micro encapsulation aseptic processing and packaging, hurdle technology, food nanotechnology etcetera and all these methods are now becoming reality and they are the novel methods if they are applied by the industries in proper manner they will result into good quality food products or many of them are economic they give economically viable safe and healthy food products. After uh, studying these novel technologies, uh, various novel technologies, we also discussed, uh, we took a few commodity based product like we, and, uh, we studied the processing of oil seeds, extraction of oils, refining of the veget edible vegetable oils, then the use of different uh, antioxidants or natural antimicrobials for extension of the products of food, food materials, processed food products. We also 
then studies that uh, self life extension methods novel methods for the extension of self life of perishable product like fruits and vegetables methods such as modified atmospheric storage active packaging control atmosphere storage edible coatings and how to maintain the quality during handling and storage of the fruits and vegetables even and we also devoted ample time on the grain storage how to uh, to maintain the good quality in the grain during its storage and we also discussed various methods maybe quick methods for analysis analysis of the grain in storage infestation and other quality attributes in the fruits vegetables like hyperspectral imaging fti and such other methods electronic nose and so on finally we discussed uh, novel technologies for manufacturing of ready to eat ready to cook health foods and beverages we devoted good time and that is the algal food technology or other products food fortified foods and nutraceuticals various product like iron fortified rice and high energy food paste snack food products etc we studied so we in the last 60 lectures almost covered the major technologies for processing and also a few are quite a sufficient number of food products uh, which have different potential for the commercialization the food products of commercial importance we discussed in this course in the last 60 hours so i will now conclude this uh, lecture or this course by saying that world has become now a smaller pay place and bigger market changes in the technology used to prepare foods have been influenced by substantial increases in the cost of both the energy and labor food processing can make major contributions to the nation's economy through optimal use of resources and energy latest food processing equipment now allow increasingly sophisticated control of processing conditions by reducing processing costs and damage to the sensory and nutritional qualities of the food particularly the heat process related damages energy savings is an important feature in most of the latest or new food processing and packaging equipment and technologies control of the equipment and process operations through automation now makes it possible to prepare better quality and safe to consume food products the higher capital investment by manufacturers in the automation from reception of raw material to processing and packaging to warehousing is now a reality and this reduces production costs by using less energy and often fewer operators and generates new revenues with this i there is a general thing about this uh, course or course summary whatever we taught uh, we studied or discussed in the earlier classes okay i would like to just uh, two three in two three minutes i would like to give you an overview of my research and laboratory at iit khadakpur that is food chemistry and technology laboratory right if uh, one is interested to know about this you can visit to this www.fctliitkjp.in the r&d thirst areas of uh, my laboratory are ready to eat health foods and nutraceuticals extension of self life of perishable foods novel food products and process development uh, food safety and quality control and so on the if we just see at uh, overview that research and development 
that is work that is being done in our laboratory about 25 to 26 percent of the total workforce or efforts is on the new product development whereas, the three fourth around 74 to 75 percent of our work is on process and machinery development. The, if we look from the sector wise about 14 to 15 percent of our work is on dairy foods, about 20 22 percent on fruits and vegetables technology, a sizable amount equal amount of about 20 21 percent is on extrusion technology, about 29 or 30 percent of our work is devoted on development of functional foods and again 14 15 percent on extraction and purification of bioactives and its utilization in different food products development. These are some of the products which uh, were developed in my laboratory and many of these we discussed in earlier uh, classes right. They are some of them are many of them are already patented right and they are uh, technologies they are many uh, these technologies are ready for commercialization if you have already been commercialized. So, these are I will just pictures of the products which are uh, samples prepared in our laboratory. And these are the books like uh, food product and process innovations in two volumes. This is uh, I am the editor of these uh, two books and uh, the authors are my present and past research scholars. Actually. So, there is IS, ISBN number is there. So, the information that is which we covered in the about products and processes in this course, uh, you can be find found in these books also. That is another book, third book is the functional foods which is written by B and with my few research scholars and other colleagues. So, the information if anyone is interested this books are available online as well as hard copies of the books are also available. Okay. So, this now I the important task which I want to perform is obviously which is a, otherwise I will be failing my duty if I do not acknowledge the hard work put by the teaching assistants of the course. The teaching assistant Dr. Danny Saje, he has been a post doctoral fellow with me. He did his PhD with me at IIT Kharagpur. Earlier he has done M tech in food process engineering and B tech in biotechnology from Karunia University. The other uh, teaching assistants is uh, Mr. Chandrakant Jainu Dal Bhagat, he is at present doing PhD with me at IIT Kharagpur. Earlier, he did M Tech in Dairy and Food Engineering, and his M Tech projects he did with me. He before M Tech, he had done B Tech in Agricultural Engineering from MPKV Rahuri. The Third teaching assistant uh, Jin, Ms. Jayasri Majumdar. Jayasri Majumdar is at present doing PhD with me. Before doing uh, coming here for PhD, she has done M Tech from Jadopur University in food and biochemical engineering and B Tech in food engineering from Allahabad Agricultural Institute. The other teaching assistant is Chirasmita Panigrahi. She is also doing PhD with me at IIT Kharagpur. Also, before PhD, she is in fact a joint M Tech and PhD. So, she did her master's degree in food process engineering also from IIT Kharagpur and her M Tech project with me. And before joining IIT Kharagpur, she did her B.Tech Agricultural Engineering from OUAT Bhuneswar. So, the contributions of 
all these teaching associate assistants in fact uh, whatever you have seen that uh, this course this uh, the major credits goes to these uh, teaching assistants or the other research scholars the both present and past research scholars of the food chemistry and technology laboratory as well as the staff associated with the food technology and the food chemistry and technology laboratory so contributions of all these is thankfully acknowledged and placed on record i will be failing if i do not uh, mention the names of uh, a few present and past research scholars who significantly contributed in the preparation of slides data and those includes ms sanchita biswas ms gayatri misra ms pooja pande ms anjali thakur ms monalisa patnayak and mr saurav misra so a special thanks to all them next is the excellent job i wish to acknowledge from my core of my heart the excellent job done by the nptl team with the video recording and lecture recording team and this team is uh, led by two project officers mr ab ramacharulu that i sincerely acknowledge they have all done very very excellent and remarkable job and which i am sure you are seeing the quality by the quality of the video etc which you are getting the other uh, project officer is mr devapriya chakravarti a kali both this team their devapriya chakravarti and ramacharulu they have been the uh, mastermind in a whole this arrangement of uh, recording this and preparing this nice videos thank you mr uh, chakravarti the mr devesh prasad project assistant his contribution is uh, thankfully recorded and uh, is praiseworthy he has always been uh, uh, available whenever i needed for any type of help uh, in this uh, regard he was available so thank you mr devasis prasad mr uttam sharma project assistant he is uh, also equally that is uh, he has done job and he has done uh, marvelous work in the recording of uh, this uh, lectures and videos thank you mr sharma mr saurav bhattacharya mr saurav bhattacharya the other project uh, assistant he also along with his team did a very good job ms is sagarika barik as that uh, she is a project assistant in nptl team and whole team they did marvelous job and last but not the not the least see mr ajay malik so oh, is here so i would uh, like to acknowledge the services surrendered by mr ajay malik and thank him so finally there is whole team of this nptl there is the video recording team i would like to give a special thanks to mr ab ramachorulu for his uh, uh, help as well as even guidance to me as far as this uh, delivery of the lecture and other matters are concerned okay so whole team their uh, excellent job is praiseworthy and it is uh, placed on records finally the nptl team of whole nptl team of iit khadakpur iit khadakpur my parent department agricultural and food engineering department and other associated departments of iit khadakpur the uh, i wish to express my sincere thankfulness to them for providing the infrastructural facilities 
and other facilities for conducting this course or regarding. And in the last, but not the least, finally, the I put I am sincerely thankful to the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India, for providing me this opportunity of uh, doing this course on novel technologies for food processing and self life extension. That is. So, finally, I hope you all enjoyed the course. Wishing you all the best for your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Jai Hind.